In this webinar, we're going to look at formations, which come up repeatedly if you look at share price charts. These formations are patterns that come up again and again, and you will often see them. And they can give you a very good idea about what might happen next. Formations like this are often associated with trend lines, with sideways markets, and with support and resistance levels. Now let us look at the typical share price cycle that we have seen before. You will notice that this chart shows the share rising steadily through a series of cycles. And this pattern is typical of most blue chip shares. As the directors focus on building the business and growing the profits, the share price goes up to reflect the rising value of the business. And as you learned in earlier webinars, the share price has a real value, which also rises steadily as the company gets bigger. And the share price oscillates from being above that to being below that and back again, from being underpriced to being overpriced. Now let us focus on a single cycle. When the share is rising steadily, as it is over here, then about 70 to 80 percent of investors are bullish and only 20 to 30 percent are negative and the opposite of course is true when the market is falling. As the share price goes up through this cycle the number of bulls declines and the number of bears increases until at the top here you will find that they are more or less evenly balanced usually resulting in a sideways market of some sort. A sideways market represents a period of uncertainty where neither the bulls nor the bears can get the upper hand for a short time. Sideways markets can also occur in a bull market, halfway up a bull market or halfway down a bear market. And for a while the bulls and the bears are evenly matched and there's uncertainty in the market and then one or the other gains the upper hand and the sideways market comes to an end. Most formations are associated with this type of pattern in one form or another. And of course, once the uncertainty is resolved, then the formation ends and we get a breakout. And as I've said in the previous webinars, the share will usually continue in the direction of the breakout. Now, the first formation I want to look at is a head and shoulders formation. You can see here that after a strong upward run, the share price rises to a point and then falls back, creating the left shoulder of the formation. This happens because many of the smart investors decide to sell out while there is still strong demand for their shares. This fall stimulates a new round of buying, which drives the share price to a new high, higher than before, and once again then the bears gain dominance and push the share price back down again. This is known as the head. Finally, there is a last rally which takes the share price up once again, but to a lower high than it reached in the head. This is known as the right shoulder. If you draw a horizontal line connecting the two lows which follow the right shoulder and the head, you will have the neckline. After the right shoulder is complete, the share price normally falls back again to the point where it breaks down through the neckline and gives a clear sell signal. After that, a strong bear trend normally begins. And this is how a head and shoulders formation works. You can also get a head and shoulders formation in reverse, an upside down head and shoulders formation. Here you can see that the, right, that the head and the right shoulder are upside down and there is the neckline. When the neckline is broken, you can expect a strong upward move. A reverse head and shoulders formation is considered to be very bullish. Now, let us suppose that you've bought a share, which has been going up very nicely, and it reaches a certain point, and you decide to sell it. Why do you decide to sell it? Because you're expecting it to fall. If you're expecting it to continue going up, you wouldn't sell it. But of course, when you sell a share, somebody else buys it. And that person has got exactly the opposite point of view about the same share on the same day at the same moment. He thinks it's going to go up. If he didn't think that, he wouldn't buy it. Now I put it to you, only one of you can be right. 
And whoever is right is going to take money away from whoever is wrong. And the whole thing will depend on the quality of your assessment at that moment in time when you make your transaction. Now let us consider a few other formations. Let us start with double tops and double bottoms. With a double top, the share price rises to a level and then falls back, before rising back to the same level and falling back again. If it does not penetrate that high, then we call that formation a double top. And that is extremely bearish. That means that the market is probably going to fall quite strongly from that point. The same thing happens in reverse, in other words, a double bottom, where the share price falls to a particular place and then rises, but then falls back again to that same place, creating that double bottom formation. Notice that the two bottoms are more or less at the same price. A double bottom formation is extremely bullish. It means that the share is probably going to go into a strong upward trend. Occasionally in the marketplace, you will come across either a V top or a V bottom. This normally occurs because a central bank like the Federal Reserve Bank, has interfered with the progress of the markets. In 2008, there was a very good example of a V bottom, where the Federal Reserve Bank printed money, literally printed money, through a program which they call quantitative easing. And the result of that was that the market turned very sharply, and we had a V bottom. The opposite of a V bottom is a saucer bottom. And the opposite of a V-top is a saucer top. These formations are far more common. As you can see here in the diagram, sentiment shifts gradually in a saucer bottom or a saucer top, so that the bulls and the bears slowly change places. The negative sentiment slowly gives way to positive sentiment, or vice versa. Another formation that you will typically find halfway up a trend or halfway down a trend is a flag or a pennant. And sometimes also you will see another one called a triangle. Let us consider those formations now. Here you can see a rising trend. And in that rising trend there are a number of different formations. The first formation is called a pennant or a flag and is basically a standard sideways market between two horizontal trend lines. The second formation is a falling triangle where the upper trend line is falling. Sometimes it's also called a wedge. The third formation is a normal triangle between rising and falling trend lines. Note that all these formations occur within a bull trend and that in each case the trend continues in the direction of the breakout. There are many different formations that you will come across when studying charts. Most of them are associated with some kind of sideways market and generally form between various trend lines, either horizontal trend lines or rising or falling trend lines. You may even be able to work out some formations of your own. But I have found formations very useful in predicting which way the trend will continue.